In this video, we're going to take a look at Hamilton paths and circuits. Hamilton was more concerned about being able to visit every vertex once and only once, as opposed to Euler, who was more concerned about the edges of a graph. Just as we did with Euler paths and circuits, we want to find necessary conditions for finding either a Hamilton path or a Hamilton circuit. So first of all, what's the difference between the two? Obviously, if we're dealing with a Hamilton circuit, we're going to start at one vertex, we're going to travel to visit each other vertex only once, and then travel back to our beginning vertex. So even though we say that it uses each vertex once and only once, if we're talking about a circuit, we will begin and end at the same vertex. For a path, we don't begin and end at the same vertex, but we still visit every vertex. So for instance, See if we can find a Hamilton path and a Hamilton cycle for W5, so the wheel graph, um, if each exists. So if I start, say, at A, I want to visit every vertex once and only once and end up back at A. So let's say I travel to E, then to F, then to D, then to C, then to B, then to A. So I went A, E, F, D, C, B, A. That is a Hamilton cycle. So what's a Hamilton path? A, E, F, D, C, B. So I just don't finish and go back to A. Now it would be great if there was some algorithm that told us exactly whether or not there was a Hamilton path or circuit or how to find it, but unfortunately that does not exist for Hamilton paths or circuits. So all we can do is take a look at what we know is true and then basically just give it a shot. So here's what we know about Hamilton paths and circuits. So if G contains a Hamilton circuit, then G also contains a Hamilton path by simply taking away that last edge which we just talked about on our last example. But of course, the converse is not necessarily true. Now again, there's no form for us to know when there is a Hamilton circuit, but we do have a few hints that will help us. So if G has a Hamilton circuit, then each vertex has degree of at least two. So right away, if we look at a graph and we have a vertex of degree one, it's not going to have a circuit. Now it could have a path, but it's not going to have a circuit because again, we would have to end up beginning and ending back at the same vertex. The next one, if A is some vertex in our graph and the degree of A is two, then the two edges that are incident with the vertex must appear in the Hamilton circuit. Um, so again, if I've got, and this is an example from your textbook, that had one that looked like this and said, hey, do you have a Hamilton circuit for this graph? Well, this has a degree two and a degree two and degree two and degree two, which means I have to use these two edges, these two edges, these two edges, these two edges, which means, guess what's gonna happen at this vertex? We're gonna go through it more than just once. So that one is not going to have a Hamilton circuit. The third one, if A is some vertex in our graph and the degree of A is greater than two, then as we start to build our Hamilton cycle, once we pass through the vertex, we have to get rid of any unused edges. So again, looking back at this particular example, if I start here, or even if I uh, start here, and I go through, once I go through here, then I would have to get rid of this and this edge. So we have to get rid of edges that are connected to that vertex. And again, that's why we can't have a Hamilton cycle because I can't end up back over where I started. Your textbook does have two theorems, Dirac's theorem and Orr's theorem, that do give you some guidance as to when a Hamiltonian circuit would exist. For instance, Dirac's theorem says that if you have a simple graph with n vertices where n is greater than or equal to three, um, if every vertex is at least n divided by two, 
then there is a Hamilton circuit. So for instance, there are six vertices here. And what Dirac's theorem says is if each, the degree of each vertex is at least six divided by two, which is three, then you're going to have a Hamilton circuit. However, what it doesn't say is what if you have, say something of degree two, like A or B or E or F. It doesn't give you any guidance there. So again, for instance, here N is five, so five divided by two is 2.5. Well, this one has a degree of two. So does that mean there's no Hamilton circuit? No, it doesn't. So those theorems aren't super helpful, except that they would tell you for certain when there is one, but it won't tell you when there is not one. So we're just gonna wing it and practice on our own and determine if each graph has a Hamilton path or circuit. So again, when we're doing this, we're trying to get to each vertex. We don't care about edges. We only want to be worried about the vertices. So let's say I started here at A. Well, to go from A, let's say I go down to B and then over to C. And remember, I'm trying to find a circuit where I end up back over at A. So I can get over to D, but here's the problem. This is called a cut edge because essentially once I've tra traversed over that, I can't use that again. So I'm for sure not going to be able to find a circuit because whether I go to E next and F or F then E, there's no way for me to get to either of those back to A. So while there is a path for this example, um, which gets to each vertex, but not back to the beginning. So it is not a circuit. For our second one, again, um, Dirac wasn't very helpful in determining whether or not there is going to be a Hamilton circuit, but let's give it a shot on our own. So if I start at A, I can travel to B, I can travel to C, I can travel to D, I can travel to E, and I can travel back to A. So this one does, in fact, have a circuit, but again, there's no theorem that's going to tell us for sure whether there is or is not a circuit or path for each of these examples. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at some shortest path problems.